How's it going, guys? Medium difficulty question, cardio, step one, step two. 17-year-old boy is a murmur discovered by a soccer team's medical assistant. Physical exam shows a stolic murmur allows at the mid-sternal mid area, stuck in your costal space. There's no change in the murmur with falsava. He's 6'5", 200 pounds. Vitals are normal. Question once in a while, so like an explanation for the cardiac findings. Let's just hop through. Choice A, asymmetric septal hypertrophy, or first hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, Hockham, wrong fucking answer. You know it's wrong because Hockham is going to have worsening of the murmur with Valsalva, okay? So Valsalva is gonna dramatically increase intrathoracic pressure, decrease preload of the heart. So when you see Valsalva in a vignette, it means decreased volume in the heart and all murmurs are going to get, either be softer or no change. Softer is the same thing as no change on USMLA, okay? So all murmurs, when you have decreased volume in the heart, so if you go, let's say from supine to standing, if you do Valsalva, all murmurs are gonna be no change or softer, except Hockham and mitral valve prolapse will get worse. Okay, so wrong fucking answer. Choice B, atrial septal defect, wrong fucking answer, because this would simply be described as fixed splitting of S2. Now I'd say, well, obviously 100% of vignettes, if they give you the sound of the murmur, they're going to say fixed splitting of S2. Some students get hyper pedantic and they say, what about wide fixed splitting of S2? Wide splitting just means right ventricular hypertrophy. Okay, paradoxical splitting means left ventricular hypertrophy. So if you had wide fixed splitting, that would just mean right ventricular hypertrophy due to chronic volume overload from an atrial septal defect, which the vignette need not mention that. For example, I've seen questions where they give you an ASD and a neonate and they just say fixed splitting of S2. And students confused as to why they don't say Wide fixed splitting of S2, well, it's too early to have right ventricular hypertrophy from an ASD. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, bicuspid aortic valve, correct answer. So most of the time, bicuspid aortic valve is not Turner syndrome. It's going to be autosomal dominant familial. And the point that confuses most students is they've erroneously alert, learned from their medical school curricula that bicuspid aortic valve will only present in adulthood when it calcifies age 40, 50 plus, which is fucking wrong, okay? So US Simile will happily give you bicuspid aortic valve in pediatrics. There's an MBME question I could think of for two CKPs where they give it to you in a three month old. And basically 100% of students are bemused slash flummoxed by, that it could possibly be bicuspid aortic valve. They're like, oh, I thought I had to present in adults. Fucking wrong, okay? So here we have a systolic murmur. It's loudest at the upper sternal area, and I was nonspecific here as far as is it right or left intercostal space because USMLE will be nonspecific. Sometimes they'll give it to you at the left inter the left sternal border, second intercostal space, which is technically the pulmonic area. And you're like, how the fuck does that make sense? It's not aortic area. I agree with you. Take it up with the NBME. All right. So no change in the murmur with falsalva. As I said, all murmurs are going to be softer or no change with less volume in the heart, except Hockham and MVP. We know it can't be Hockham in this case. Let's just hop through the others here. So cystic meniocrosis, wrong fucking answer, refers to changes in the aorta that you see classically with Marfan syndrome, but it can occur with hypertension as well. So this would refer to aortic regurgitation in the setting of aortic dissection, okay, which would be a diastolic murmur, which we clearly don't have here. I threw in the fact that OMG, he could potentially have Marfan syndrome. He's six foot five, 200 pounds, a little bit heavy. They'll, they'll give you a bit of a lighter BMI. But the point is we would have a decrescendo uh, diastolic murmur or a holo diastolic murmur that's loudest immediately after S2 can be described as an early diastolic murmur. So you need to know that the highest yield cause of aortic regurge on US simile is aortic dissection. They can be bounding pulses, okay, head bobbing, wide pulse pressure, big difference between systolic diastolic pressure. Aortic stenosis in contrast will give you pulses parvus tardis, slow rising pulses can radiate to the carotids. Choice D. Wrong fucking answer. Choice Z, myxomatous degeneration. Wrong fucking answer. You know it's wrong. This refers to mitral valve prolapse. Okay, so generic term that can refer to connective tissue degeneration, mitral valve seen with ehlers danlos Marfan syndrome. You'd have a mid systolic click. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to the channel. Appreciate your time. That's it.